Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we did was we uh, we made the conversion, I guess, from concrete mathematics over to the uh, to the wonderful world of abstract mathematics. So um, slightly painful, but hey, hey, brought me back to the old days a little bit. So here we are at uh, at Fun Burger and the Burger Master. There, he makes a lot of hamburgers. He makes four hamburgers per minute. In order to address the heavy volume of the customers, he needs to continue at this rate for 30 minutes of time. If he continues to make hamburgers at the same pace, how many hamburgers does he make in 30 minutes now? Uh, okay, so what we've been doing is drawing charts for such things. So in my particular chart here, my little ratio chart here, I would have burgers and I would have minutes. And the given rate here is four burgers per minute. And we're looking for 30 minutes of time here. So at 30 minutes, so at 30 minutes in here, I need to find this particular value. And according to my little patterns here, it looks like I have a multiply by 30 because 1 times 30 gives me 30. And which means on the other side of things, if these ratios are indeed to uh, stay equivalent, I need to take uh, 4 and multiply that by 30. If I do, I get 120 burgers, which is great because there's my value, here's my unit, and I'm feeling pretty good. So now we're going to make or we'll convert this over to... Uh, the w wonderful world of abstract. So what we have going on here, what I want to do is turn everything into a fraction. If I fractionalize everything and know a little bit about rules when it comes to fractions and multiplying, uh, things are going to be great. So I have four burgers per minute. And if I'm going to do that for 30 minutes of time, I'm going to need to multiply my four burgers per minute times 30. So that entire process, four burgers per minute, needs to happen 30 times. Okay times means multiply. So uh, in essence, I have four burgers per minute, and I'm going to multiply that by 30 minutes of time. Okay, a little something like that. Okay, what I want to do, and what I'm teaching the class, is to turn everything into a fraction. Fractionalize every single part of this guy here, and if you do, um, you see lots of options and simplification, and it's just a good way to start. So I'm going to fractionalize everything in this particular problems, including the whole numbers, including the units. So everything here needs to be multiplied. So I have 4, my becomes 4 over 1, because 4 as a fraction is 4 over 1. Anything, you want to turn anything into a fraction, stick it over 1, because 4 divided by 1 still equals 4. Okay, Burgers over minutes, that doesn't change. That's a fraction already. Okay. Next is 30. 30, same thing. I'm going to stick that over 1 because 30 over 1 is still equivalent to 30, still equals 30. And then minutes, I'm going to put that over 1 because whatever the minutes are, over 1 is still going to equal minutes, right? Even some kind of variable over 1 is still going to equal that variable. Now, using the concept of or the property of multiplication known as the commutative property, I can change the order of anything I want. Uh, on the top here, because all these guys are going to get multiplied. If I multiply fractions, that's what that means. All these guys are going to get multiplied. And everything on the bottom is going to get multiplied. Okay. The commutative property stipulates that I can change the order of any of these guys. So let's, for example, anything on the top, I can change the order. I can change the order with the 4, with the 30. I can put the 30 first ahead of the 4. Or the minutes and the burgers, I can change the places of those guys. It doesn't really matter. I can change the place of these guys. I can change the place of these guys over here with these guys. Um, it doesn't really matter. So, um, And the same thing holds true on the bottom. On the bottom, I can trade places with this guy with this guy and this guy with this guy. It doesn't matter. That's the commutative property. Now, keeping that in mind, what I want to do is to start to simplify here. I want, I want to say, let's say, if I take the minutes and I push it over here, so the minutes is over here, and the 1 winds up over here, that's a good thing because I have minutes over minutes now. And if I have minutes over minutes, anything over itself as a fraction is simply equivalent to 1, which is great. So this becomes 1 over itself. doesn't matter what the minutes are. Minutes over minutes equals 1. Just like 15 over 15 would equal 1, or 27 over 27 would equal 1, okay? Now that this guy equals 1, well, I don't have to use it in, uh, you know, as far as multiplying is concerned because it's not going to change the value. What's left? Well, I have 4 times burgers times 30 on top. Well, 4 times 30 equals 120. There's 120. Uh, burgers, oops, I ran out of room here. Let me put it underneath here. 
So I have 120, oops, let's say wrong spot there. So I have 120 burgers over one times one, technically times one, over one, which means I have 120 burgers. And look at that, 120 burgers over there. I have 120 burgers over here. There are those burgers, and I'm good to go. All right, now that looks like a big old nest, um, <laughs> and it sure does, but I'm going to do the next one, and it'll look a little more, uh, a little cleaner, a little more clean. All right, so here we go. So let me um, let me scroll down here. First, I have to erase some things, apparently, because my little toolbar is gone. Let's see. Let me get rid of all that. Good. Get rid of all that. Good. So here we are. So we have Chandra. And she's the editor of the New York Gazette, and her job is to read each article before it is printed in the paper. She can read 10 words per second. So how many words can she read in, that, in 60 seconds? So let's, let's begin. So I have 10 words per second. I have 60, and I have seconds. All right, so I need 60 sets of these guys here. So this is a big old multiplication problem. So I'm going to fractionalize it all. 10 over 1 times words over seconds. Notice that's all, that already looks like a fraction, so we're good. Times 60 over 1 times seconds over 1. And now we're going to reduce a bit. So the seconds can reduce with the seconds. Okay, Seconds divided by seconds equals 1 over 1. All right, And now we can just multiply. The bottom's going to be 1 because I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Now the top, I have 60 times 10. That gives me 600 times 1, well, that's still 600, times words, well, it's 600 words. There you are, which equals 600 words. And there you have it. Now, if you want to check that with the chart, pretty cool. Okay, so we have words per second, and they gave us 10 words for every second. Okay, that's my unit rate. And they want to know how long for 60 seconds. Well, here it's a time 60. Over well, here's a time 60. So 10, 60 times 10, 600, and the unit is words. All right. That's the deal, folks. And uh, all right. So take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.